Nowadays, thanks to the internet, there's a lot of great stuff out there for learning pretty much anything. But there's also a smattering of bad advice. This tends to be older beliefs and myths that, while once believed to be true, now in this age of interconnectedness, we're realizing that a lot of it is just plain out false and is actually hurting people, preventing them from learning more effectively. So today, I want to help you to avoid some of that bad guitar advice that could possibly stop you from reaching your goals. Really quick before we get started, if you enjoy learning guitar with me, please take a moment to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment. And if you haven't grabbed your copy of my free ebook, I'll put a link to that in the corner. I also have some premium courses available that we'll talk more about later. Now, the first bad beginner guitar tip that I'd like to address is that you must start on an acoustic guitar before moving on to electric. And while the idea behind this makes some sense, you know, people will say that it helps you build finger strength since acoustics a little bit tougher to play and it'll make sure that you get the fundamentals of chords and strumming down pat. The truth is you can still strum chords on electric and the finger strength thing isn't really an issue because it's more about the technique and how you press the strings versus how hard you press them. And if you're somebody who, like me, was instantly attracted to all the cool stuff that you can do on electric guitar, While it is possible to do stuff like that on acoustic, it's way more accessible on electric. And my final bit of proof is myself. I started on electric guitar. I didn't even buy an acoustic until like two years into my guitar journey. And when I did, it was pretty straightforward for me to pick it up. You know, it wasn't any harder to play. I already knew all the chords and the strumming because I did all that stuff on electric. I just had to get used to the body of the guitar being a little bit bigger, you know, holding it. It took me like three or four days and that was it. Don't get me wrong, uh, acoustic and electric guitar are both great. I love playing both. I just want you to know that they're both valid starting instruments. The next bad guitar tip that I see out there is to not bother with alternate guitar tunings. And this is more of a, like a late beginner and intermediate one. Let's say that you have some of the chords and strumming down and you wanna keep making progress and do some more interesting things on guitar. The path that is most often made available to people in that position is to double down on technique, theory, and to basically learn more and more complicated things that are gonna take more and more practice time to achieve. But something that people don't mention too often is using alternate tunings. When I was a late beginner slash early intermediate player, I was misinformed. I was told that alternate tunings are cheating. And for those of you who aren't familiar, that's where you just change the notes of your open strings. Usually it'll make a chord without pressing anything. And you know, then you just use a single finger and you can play full on chord shapes. And that's why people might consider it cheating, right? But at the end of the day, it's as easy or as complex as you make it. And there are tons of artists, tons of famous songs that I'm certain that you'll recognize that use alternate tunings. Jimmy Page was famous for using Dadgad and other alternate tunings. The Rolling Stones use open E a lot. Uh, Can't Always Get What You Want, Jumpin' Jack Flash, Honky Tonk Woman. Uh, Dwayne Allman of the Allman Brothers Band, one of the greatest slide players of all time. Uh, Joni Mitchell used open tunings like on Big Yellow Taxi and you know a ton of her songs. Bon Iver for a more modern artist, he uses it a bunch. You're Gonna Make Me Lonesome When You Go by Bob Dylan, uh, Elliot Smith, Independence Day, a whole bunch of tunes. The list goes on. You know, so if it's good enough for those guys, it's good enough for you. It's a great way to take what you can already play on guitar, to just take chords and strumming and immediately get more interesting and colorful sounds from it. The third one that I wanna cover is that you don't need to learn music theory. And while I would agree that you don't need to learn it in this very intense academic way, there are two or three things that everybody should learn that would technically qualify as theory. The first one is all the notes on the two thicker strings. You should be able to go E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And I have a video, it takes six minutes to go through that covers all of that um, because that'll allow you to just look up chords and play power chords like G, A, B, 
or bar chords eventually. Like you just look up, you know, like A, F sharp minor, E. Or you could do that with full on bar chords. Uh, you can figure out what key to take a solo in. Like if somebody says, hey, let's play a blues in B. You know where to find B. You know how to line up your shape. There's infinite applications for that, you know. Um, the other thing that you can do is to understand the major scale. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. A whole step is where you go up two frets. Half step is where you go up one fret. So you start anywhere on the fretboard, and then you go whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, and you get a scale. And then you can learn to play it in a single position, and you can use that to learn melodies by ear or as a basis for learning what chords go well together when you're songwriting or make it makes learning songs by ear easier too you know and that's ear training and it's also a part of, of music theory you know and these are all really practical things that you're going to be using all the time especially if you reach a point where you want to learn songs quickly or you just want to be able to play along with other musicians that kind of theory is invaluable and everybody's going to kind of assume that you can at least figure out what key a song is in and know where to put the things you know um anyone who says otherwise kind of wrong Another piece of advice that I kind of hate is that you should use thicker strings and thicker picks for the best tone. A lot of people will base this on Stevie Ray Vaughan, the legend of Stevie Ray Vaughan, who is a legendary guitar player who used apparently massive strings and he could do all these crazy bends and he was incredible and that's good for him. But for the average person, I don't really think it's necessary. It's just gonna make your guitar harder to play. And I've actually seen some stuff, like some videos online of people doing tests. And apparently in a lot of situations, thinner strings sound better. So the exact opposite could be true. I myself got wound up in this. When I was going to music school, I put some thick strings on one of my guitars because everybody told me it would give me better tone. I ended up getting tendonitis, switching back to thinner strings and everything's all good now. Uh, you know, and your mileage may vary, in regards to picks, uh, I recommend starting out with a very thin pick. It'll be much more forgiving as far as your strumming sound is concerned. Once you start picking individual notes and melodies, you'll find that a thin floppy pick just doesn't cut it, but you don't need to go all the way to using some thick stubby pick. Once again, I started out with one and I found myself thinning it out to like the most normal medium pick that you can use. You know, my idols inspired me to use thicker picks, but I ended up finding what works best for me. And I recommend that you do the same for you. The final bad guitar tip that I'd like to address today is that you should only practice songs and not bother with scales or exercises. And while practicing songs does make your practice sessions more fun, it can really slow down your progress because there's a bit of a misconception when it comes to practicing scales. The second I say those words, you probably picture somebody sitting down and doing this boring, monotonous practice, doing the same thing over and over again, like. But the truth is, you can combine the two approaches seamlessly so that one feeds the other. You start with the song. And then you figure out what makes it tick. Maybe you're learning Wild World by Cat Stevens and you know that it has some cool notes in there, you know, like those like. Well, guess what? Those are scales. And if you just practice the song and you play those notes, like those are the notes for the runs in Wild World, that's cool, you know, and it'll sound okay and you'll keep playing it over and over again and it'll keep sounding okay, maybe getting a little bit better every time. But if you take the time to learn about that scale, learn the correct fingerings, learn to press it so that every note rings clearly, and then you do a bit of repetitive practice, which by the way gets a bad rap. I love being able to just turn off my brain and doing, just let my hands, you know, just do their thing. It's a form of meditation, helps me clear my head. Anyways, you do that, you work on the tricky parts, and you turn the hard parts of the songs into exercises. And through that, you end up learning scales that you can apply 
to other tunes and you run across another song that uses something really similar, you already have the muscle memory for the fingerings. You're already pressing the notes cleanly. It's going to be so much quicker to learn more music, all because you took a little bit of extra time to break the song down and learn it right. You know, and I'm going to wrap things up here. My goal today was to guide you in the right direction so that you don't waste any time learning guitar and you can make every moment of your practice count. If you enjoyed this lesson, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, like the video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Don't forget to grab your copy of my free ebook. I also have a bunch of courses designed to take you from where you're at now to where you want to be on guitar. It's not just the information or what to do. I will show you how to learn everything. It's all laid out in a step-by-step -step path that will guide you towards your goals. Plus, all my courses come with access to my Good Guitarist community. It's like a private online group where you can get direct access to me and ask me anything that you need to know. I will be there to help you out. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.